What's going on guys, it's Emil here, and today I'm bringing you a modding tutorial. I didn't think I would be doing any of these again, but I figured I might as well do this one because I thought it was really cool. So in case you guys don't know, the menu single is the file that loads when you're on the menu for single player, either offline or online. So you'll be seeing this when you're voting for tracks online, or if you're going into a time trial or VS race on offline. Before we start the tutorial, I want to give a major shout out to Silver for making this Mario Kart boards thread that I'm get basing this tutorial off of. We'll be using some of the content from this thread in order for this tutorial to work. With that said, here's what you'll need. You'll need a GIF file. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using this GIF of Mario getting zapped, which I found kind of funny and perfect for the needs of this tutorial. Um, You'll need a menu single file, we'll download that in just a second. And you'll need Brawlbox. Brawlbox is a way you'll edit TPL files, they're like image files basically. And finally, since we're using the GIF that I'm using, you'll need a tool called Wexosis Toolbox. I'll provide a download link in the description, you'll need a little bit of a setup for it, but it shouldn't take that long to set up. With that said, let's get into the tutorial. First thing you're going to want to do is download the menu single file. Silver has a hyperlink here. You can simply click this and it'll redirect you to a download. Now you're going to want to go to your Weems SES tools folder and find the bin folder. For this tutorial, I'm just going to name it menu single tutorial dot SES. And I already had a file saved my bad. So we can just replace that. Once you save that, you're going to want to go to the folder, the bin folder that is. And as you can see, we have menu single tutorial and I'm going to delete this real quick because that was from a, another recording. Anyway, once you have menu single tutorial, you're going to need to extract all the content of the menu single file. For this, you're going to want to launch SCS console. This is a batch file for Windows users. I'm not sure how it works for Mac. I'm sorry about that. Once you launch SCS console, you should get this command prompt window. Now to extract all the contents, you're going to want to type in the following command WSCST space extract space two dashes all another space and then the name of your file and make sure to add .scs to make sure that the program knows what file type you're dealing with. Once you hit enter, you'll see that the program is starting to extract all the contents of menu single into a folder. Leave this window open because it's not complete yet. It is extracting all the files into this folder that you can see the file name of here. However, once it is done, you can see here, it'll load another line right there. Once it's done, you can close out of this window and you'll see that a new folder has been created. Now, when we go into this folder, you'll see some other folders here, which can be confusing but we're going to be editing the contents of the BG folder. Now, before we go on anymore, we need to work with the GIF that we're going to be using. So if you head back to Silver's thread, you'll see that there is another hyperlink with this site here. If you click it, you'll see you're taken to a GIF frame extractor and splitter. Here, if you have your GIF saved, you can upload it. Otherwise, since I don't have mine saved, I'll copy the image address of my GIF and put it in here. When I hit upload, you can see some details about the GIF. You can see the width, the height, and the frames. This is the information that's vital for this tutorial. Now, the width and height are something we need to change. Luckily, EasyGIF has a feature which will take care of this. If you hit resize image, you can change the width and height. So, for making this work, pro work properly, you have to have the width as 500 and the height as 375. When you hit resize image, you'll see down here that the GIF has been resized. The width has changed and the height has changed and we have 21 frames for some reason. I don't know why we lost a frame when we were going through that, but that doesn't really matter too much since it still helps me with the purpose that I'm going through for this tutorial. Now, once you have this, make sure you're in this resized image part. I was kind of confused the first time and went back up here. That's not how it works. When you're down here, you're gonna wanna hit the split button. Double check to make sure that the width and height of your GIF is correct. Make sure you know the amount of frames. And for split options, what I like to do is output images in a PNG format and then hit split to frames. 
Once it's done, you'll see that it has split images. It'll show you each individual image from the GIF. At the very bottom of all that, you'll find download frames as zip. Simply click this button and save it where you'll be able to remember it. In my case, I like to save it in a the pictures folder because I don't really save much in there and it's really easy to find. So once I hit save, you'll see that it is a compressed zip format. So once you open that, you'll see that it's just all of your frames here as PNG files. Simply hit extract, make sure you know where it's extracting to and hit extract. Once it's done, if you go back to, well, I'll open up pictures in a separate window. If you open up pictures here, you will see that there is this folder here and all the frames of the GIF are set. Now, remember how I said we needed to keep track of the GIF? Now, this is where you open Wexos's toolbox. Since we have more than 20 frames of a GIF, we need to open up. So if we go back into the bin folder in Wexos's toolbox, you'll need to open up a BRLAN file. Menu single tutorial, go to BG, go to this anim folder, and then bgloop.brlan. You're gonna wanna open this file. Once you're in the Berlan editor, you're gonna wanna find this PAI1 with a plus sign next to it. Expand this all the way, but we won't edit everything just yet. I'll talk about keyframes in just a second. First of all, you need to go to this PAI1 file. You'll notice the number of frames is 100. This is how long the animation lasts. In, ca in case you guys don't understand what this means in terms of time, one second is equivalent to 60 frames. So this is about one and two thirds seconds, which is definitely a little bit too long for the sake of this tutorial. And if we remember correctly, we have 21 frames in here. So since I want it to like be evenly spread, I don't want it to last a second since that seems like it would be way too slow. So let's set it to 42. That way it'll be just a little bit under a second, but it'll still cycle through all the frames really easily. Since we have 21 frames, you go down to this TPLs box and you can't edit this number of TPLs button like directly. So what you have to do here in TPL file names is go all the way to the end here and click this button with three dots. What you'll see here is a list of TPL files going from one to 20. Since the GIF has 21 frames, we're going to add one more, just pat21.tpl and hit OK. You can see the number of TPLs updated automatically. Once we do that, we need to go to these keyframes. As you can see, the frame index here starts at zero and the value is zero. This is because this is set up as an array. Arrays start at zero and go up to the number when necessary. So as you can see, this goes from zero to 19 and we still have 20 values. Now, what we need to note here is that we have 42 frames and not 95. So what you're going to want to do here is set this. This this one is going to stay the same no matter what. But here, the value is going to remain constant. But here, you're going to want to change this frame index to 2 since we're going up by 2 each time. So we'll change this to 4. All right, now that I've gone through every single one of these frame indexes and edited the value appropriate all the way from zero to 38, counting by twos, you'll notice that we only have 20 key frames, but that we actually have 21 TPLs. <clears throat> so what you're gonna wanna do here is right click on entry zero and add keyframe. You see at the bottom here, we now have a keyframe 20. If we look at the previous data, we'll notice that we have frame index 38 and the value of 19. What we need to do here, is set the value to 20 here, since it's actually the 21st keyframe. And we'll set this to 40. That way, it'll go all the way from zero to 40. And after the last keyframe, it'll loop back and start back at zero. 
Once you're done doing all this, you can hit save on this brlan file. And you will notice that it says it has successfully saved. Once you're done with that, you can close out a Wexos's toolbox. Next, we're going to need to edit some TPL files to make sure that all the images load properly. For this, you're going to want to go into this TIMG folder. With the file that's silver linked, you'll see this like these images going from 1 to 20 with like this anime character. We don't want to edit these PNG files. What we're actually going to want to edit is the TPLs. But before we even get into that, you can notice that there are only 20 TPLs and our image has 21 frames. So what you're going to want to do here is simply copy and paste this like other pat 20 and just rename it to pat 21. Now we're going to replace each image inside of a TPL. So I'm going to double click this and I use brawl crate, but you can, but brawl box will basically have the same process. Now the only thing you're going to have to worry about here is this texture zero. You're going to want to right click it and hit replace. Here you look for the GIF you were looking for, the folder, and you go inside and you start with frame zero. And you open that. This is a good place to double check that the size of your GIF is correct. And if it is, go down to this image area and click format. Make sure it's set to CMPR. If it's set to any other format, you'll notice that the file, the data size increases significantly. CMPR has the smallest data size and it maintains the image quality to a pretty decent standard. Once you make sure that's all correct, click OK and save that TPL. You're going to want to do this for all your other TPLs, but obviously be sure to replace the proper image as well. Alrighty, now that I've done all the replacements of the TPLs and make sure you have them all saved, you can head back to this bin folder, go back to the SCS console once again. Now we need to reform the SCS file. So for that, you're going to want to type in this command, WSDST create the name of the folder. So this is going to have a .d attachment instead of .scs. And since I don't like to delete the file after I extracted it, I just do two dashes and then overwrite. When you hit enter, you'll notice that it's creating the file. It doesn't say so, but since it's a blank line, it's making that file. And once it's done, you'll see that it has done it. It'll, it'll only show you that after for some reason, but once again, it'll go to a new line indicating that the command has been executed. At that point, you can close command prompt. Now that we have this done, you need to put your SD card in your computer. Which for some reason, I forgot to do before starting this. My bad. Ah. <laughs> and have your CTGPR window open get to the my stuff folder and then drag them in okay that's not what I meant to do let's try this again huh all right drag the menu single folder menu single file my bad again wow like flopping it drag menu single onto here and make sure you name it properly unlike me so menu single once that's done you can eject your device and put it back into your Wii and let's load it up. Now, once you load the game, you can simply run a test by going to the one player menu, just loading that. And let's just see if it worked.
it might take a little bit to load since you know it's a big file and as you can see we have our beautiful mario being electrocuted to all oblivion poor mario now if you want to remove this like timer in the background there is a backmodel.scs that is included on silver's thread as you can see here there is yeah if you don't want rotating models in the background download this this will link backmodel.scs if you put that in your my stuff folder it'll get rid of the timer for time trials and it'll get rid of the flag or anything for battle stuff like that so that's just one little side note before ending this tutorial anyway guys thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that if you guys want to see more stuff like this let me know in the comments down below do like and subscribe obviously because all your support means so much anyway thank you so much i'll see you guys in the next video peace out